Google Drive is a cloud-based system for file storage. It provides all members of the educational community with tools to upload, access, store, and share up to 15 gigabytes of files. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some of the advanced functions in Google Drive that can be beneficial to educators. One of the functions I want to show you is how to upload files and folders to Google Drive. So in order to do that, you want to log into your Gmail account click the app launcher button and select drive and when it loads up you'll see all your folders and files listed right there in front of you so if you have a folder or a file that you want to upload from your computer to the cloud here's how you do it first you want to go in and find the folder that you want the file to live in so I've made this folder called testing drive this is just going to be where we upload our things to today and I want to show you a couple of the basic options for uploading. So to upload a file, the first thing you'll want to do is click the upload button and select files. Now I have this one here, it's a Microsoft Word document that I created. So we'll select this and click upload. And then you'll see that there's some upload settings here. Um, there are two options. You can either convert documents, presentations, and spreadsheets and drawings to the corresponding Google Docs format, which works well sometimes as long as you don't have a bunch of fancy formatting on your files. And there's also an option to convert text from PDF and image files to Google Docs. This works sometimes. Um, it's okay. But then there's also the option to not select any of these. And what that'll do is essentially it'll just upload the file as is. So if it's a Microsoft Word document, it'll just upload it straight into your Google Drive as a Microsoft Word document. Now you won't be able to edit it if it's a Microsoft Word document, but you will be able to view it to see the file. And you can also download it so that if you're working on a computer that has Microsoft Office installed on it, then you could edit it that way. So... I like to make sure that it confirms my settings before each upload so I'll have this checked and for this one I'll show you what it looks like when we convert it so we'll just select convert and start upload and now we'll see here that our Microsoft Word document is now a Google Docs document and I'll show you that it basically saves all the same formatting as was in the original document because I didn't do anything fancy it was just a simple text document. In order to select your settings for how you'd like to upload you just go to the home page of your drive and you'll click over here in the top right on the gear there's a settings button and you'll just want to go to upload settings and you'll see here I, I keep it on confirm settings before each upload because sometimes if it's just a, a PDF and I just want to save it into my online locker then I'll do it that way but if it's something that you want to be able to edit it with Google Docs then you'll want to try and convert it um, and the, the same goes for spreadsheets and everything else um, just know that there are certain things uh, formatting wise that work in Microsoft Office that don't correspond with Google Docs so you'll have to play around with it and see I think it's best policy to once you start using Google Docs to try and create most everything that you can in Google Docs and that way you won't run into formatting issues and errors of that sort. Another really neat advanced function of Google Drive that can be helpful to teachers and students alike is that it allows you to connect apps to your account. So one thing that I should note is that if you are using Google Apps for Education through your district or through under the umbrella of your school you won't really be able to connect apps on your own they'll have to be connected by your IT administrator and they will be branched out to every person within the organization so if there's certain apps that you'd like to use as a teacher I would suggest contacting your IT administrator for the district or for the school and requesting that they add the apps that you don't already have so here's how you do it. Um, through your drive, you're going to go up to the settings, click settings, and you'll go down to manage apps. And in here you'll see there's a lot of apps that come in at 
um, by default they're just automatically on there and they don't allow you to disconnect them um, all the ones that we'll be talking about in the resource guide docs drawings forms and and so on if you want to add more apps you just go up here to connect more apps and it will bring up a search box for you to search through all the apps that are within the Google Suites. So I just wanted to show you guys a couple that I find beneficial for students. One of those is the Voice Recorder app. I think this is a good one for students because they can read into the computer microphone and record their voice and then later on down the road if they save all of these into their Google Drive they can listen to their progression and hear where they have messed up on words or hear how they've gotten better um, so in order to connect this you just are going to click connect and it'll ask you some prompts just to make sure that you do want to connect it I'll click OK and OK again and I've also just wanted to show you here how this works so I created a folder for my voice recordings so anytime I want to create a new voice recording I'll just click in here and then I'll go to create and now you see this app shows up as one of the types of files I can create so I'll click cloud audio recorder and now you see a couple settings it's going to ask you to confirm that you would like to give access to your computer's camera and microphone so I'm just going to go ahead and click allow and then you can train the students to do the recording you'll just want to show them in order to start the recording you press start and you can talk into the microphone and say all the things you want to say for instance if they're reading a book they could read through everything and when they finish they would click stop and then I would instruct the students to select download as mp3 because that's a compressed format it's going to make your file size a lot smaller um, so you'll want to maybe have them download it or first they can play the recorded audio to make sure that the playback works So it's a little fuzzy because I'm using two microphones. So once they have it, they'll select download as MP3. And what's neat about this app is it allows you to save directly into your Google Drive. So I'm just going to select this, save to Google Drive and this will only happen the first time that you use this but I'm just going to go ahead and click login and authorize it's just making sure that I do want this to be one of my apps so I'll go ahead and select save to Google Drive and then you can give it a name for your students that might be my first audio recording and they could maybe even put the date in just however you want them to do it it's up to you and then you can also through here select which folder you want to save in so I'm gonna save this into my voice recordings click select and then just click save as now you'll see instantaneously when you go back to your drive my first audio recording is right there where we've saved it you can play it just to make sure that it works Say. Okay, so we know it works. Another really cool app that I think students and teachers can get use out of is the video recording app. So I just want to show you what it looks like. And if you want to learn how to use this app, I'll be doing a, a tutorial on that later on in the YouTube folder of this resource manual. So, just like we did with the last one, we'll click on the settings bar and go to manage apps and go to connect more apps and we'll just type in video and I like to use this one it's called we video video editor and maker so the same deal you would just click connect and allow it to do its thing and then when you 
go back to your drive, you'll be able to create a new video editing project. So if, again, if you're interested in seeing that, go ahead and click ahead to the YouTube section of this resource guide and you'll be able to watch the tutorial for how to use WeVideo Editor there. So those are just a few of the advanced functions of Google Drive. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section and I'll do my best to respond to all of them. Thanks and have a nice day.